Well, that was a big win for the Jazz. That was awesome to see. Uh, second tight game in a row. Jazz finished out. Uh, they finished out strong. I guess I, I should have finished that sentence. But um, second game in a row that they did that. I, I looked at it because this is something I'm probably going to track for games like this in the future. But the Jazz, they didn't turn the ball over. And their turnover issues weren't that bad. They only had 10 turnovers. The Suns had 9 I'm fine with that differential. Uh, But they didn't turn the ball over for the last seven minutes. So when it came time to close out the game, they held on to the ball. So I think it's going to be something interesting to see because historically the Jazz have had turnover problems. They've turned the ball over much more often than their opponents. But I'm going to start tracking to see when their last turnover in the game is. So I thought that was interesting. Also, Donovan Mitchell had his uh, second big game in a row which made me want to go look at his recent stats. So if you'll bear with me for a second, I just wanted to go over just his last, his statistics over his last 10 games, which understand there was an all-star break in, uh, in the middle of this. So, but he came back really strong from the all-star break. It's only been two games, but in his, his season average, let's start with that. Um, he's averaging, and I'm going to round a little bit. So, It's not exactly to the first decimal point, but uh, so far this season, he's averaging about 26 points per game, five assists, four rebounds, a steal and a half, and he's shooting about 46% from the field and 36% from three. Those are good numbers. Uh, Not amazing. I would like his efficiency to be a bit better. Uh, Everything else I'm happy with. He and he is averaging three turnovers, which I'll live with. Um, I would like to see it a little bit lower, but I'll live with it when you're the star player. You're going to have a few extra turnovers. So 26, five assists, four rebounds, 46% from the field, 36% from three. That's a season average. Uh, and as a steal, 0.6. Uh, I guess I'll go one decimal there. Over the last 10 games, he increased his average points per game by two. He's up to 28. Uh, five rebounds and five assists, so he's getting an extra rebound a game, which is nice. Uh, he's 1.7 steals instead of 1.6, about the same, but a little bit better. Uh, the turnovers are the same, but we'll, but let's look at the shooting splits. His, uh, I, I didn't mention free throws because it's about the same. He's actually a little bit worse recently, like two percentage points. Um, but field goal percentage, he's 51% from the field compared to a season average of 46%. That's huge. Three point percentage. He his season average is thirty six percent. Right now he's at forty six percent over the last ten games. That's a huge jump. If he can keep playing like that, the Jazz are going to like. I mentioned last video. If you didn't watch it, I mentioned that I don't think the Jazz are really in the contender race right now. Um, now I did. I'm. That's not me trying to be pessimistic. That's me trying to be real with how the rest of the league is, how the West is looking. I, I I hope I put a caveat. I don't remember if I said this explicitly, but I'll put it now if I didn't, that the Jazz still have the chance to earn their way back into the contender, contender race. They're not out for the season. They have a chance to earn that back. If Donovan Mitchell's shooting like that for the rest of the season into the playoffs, the Jazz will uh the Jazz have a really good chance of earning their way back into that contender race. So I want to bring that up. I know this is a post game review, but Donovan Mitchell had a great game tonight, so I wanted to shout him out and and shout out how good he's been doing the last 10 games. And this is the last 10 games for the Jazz, so this is only over the last seven games that he's played. Um, This is just the stats that ESPN's giving me. Um, I didn't spend a whole ton of time to... Sometimes I do that. I didn't do that for this. This was kind of a last-minute decision that I wanted to add, add on. And let's jump back to the Jazz as a whole. Over the last 10 games, they're 8-2. and two. Over the last 9, they're 8-1. Um, and one. Uh, So they've won 8 of their last 9 games, which is huge. That, that one loss was against the Lakers. They should have won. Oh, well, we'll, we'll live with it. Um, but the Jazz are hot. They're 3 games out of the 3rd seed, which I think that's the highest the Jazz can really hope to get to at this point in the season but things are looking good 
earlier is it looked like not super hopeful that they would get to that third seed. I know they were only like at most like four and a half, five games out at any given point, but with the number of games left, even three games is kind of with how good the Grizzlies have been. Three games won't be easy. The Jazz keep playing like they have been playing. I think the, they'll probably catch up to the Grizzlies and earn that third seed. And that could be huge. That uh, could potentially give them home court advantage in the second round. Um, so, yeah, that that's a that is could be a big deal, especially the Jazz. They play well at home. Um, so let's go over this game. It was it was interesting, and it, it brought up. It it brought up a trend that I don't have. I haven't noticed it long enough to know if this is a real trend or if it's just happened a couple times that I noticed. But I've been noticing the Jazz kind of start off each half a little bit slow, especially the first quarter. Sometimes it's in the third quarter. Sometimes they, they but they catch up by the end of that quarter. And then the so the second and fourth quarter they play great. First and third, the second half is great. The first half is a little bit slow. Uh, which is exactly what happened. They they let the Suns get off to a lead in this game. They came back and tied it, I think, by the end of the first. They played a great second quarter. The Suns were looking like they were pulling away with the game, like not, not a huge lead. They were up by uh, maybe double digits briefly, but normally they were up by a 6-8 to eight for a good chunk of the third quarter. The Jazz end the quarter with like a 16-3 to three run or something ridiculous like that. Take the lead going into the fourth. And the Suns kept it tight. The Suns are good. Chris Paul was out, so we'll we'll put that caveat on there. But if they meet the Suns in the playoffs, Chris Paul might be out again. So this might be the team they're playing. Suns are a great team. They kept in it. But the Jazz clo- closed out the game. Uh, Donovan Mitchell had... It didn't ice the game, but it. if he didn't hit this, I don't know if the Jazz would have won. But he hit a ridiculous, like, leaning bank three-pointer. Uh, um, it, it's one of those things where that shot was probably luck. That's not a super high percentage shot, but Donovan Mitchell's good enough to be lucky right now. So, so we'll take it. Um, so the, I think, um, if you look at the, I, I kind of want to dig into the stats just a little bit, um, but looking at the box score, and then I'll jump into the team stats. Normally, I start. Uh, well, we'll do it backwards today. So, starting off, Donovan Mitchell had his twenty-six points, uh, five assists, two steals. Um, he wasn't terribly efficient. He was a little bit under fifty percent. He was eight for twenty, but he got the job done. He was he was hitting his threes. He was six for eleven from the three-point line. I think the story of the game for the Jazz is we kind of got from the Jazz starters what we expect. 26 points from Mitchell, Conley threw in his 13, Bogey is 11, O'Neal had a probably a better than average game at 9 points, and and we got our 3 blocks, 14 rebounds, and 16 points from Gobert, which is ridiculous, and it's weird that that's common, like, it's not weird, but it's, uh, like, we need to realize that that's not normal <laughs> for a player to get 16 points, 14 rebounds, and 3 blocks pretty much every single game, but that's just like a normal stat sheet, the stat line for Gobert at this point. So we from the Jazz starters, we got what we expected. And the bench, it was really like we we saw eight points from Whiteside, eight points from House, but Clarkson came in with 22 points, which was awesome. He was on fire. He was 10 for 17 this game. And I think I think Clarkson kind of won the game for us. He he was plus 20. If you look at the plus minus for the Jazz and the Suns in the box score. Every member of the Jazz starting lineup is minus. Mitchell is only minus three. I, I got to give that plug for how good Mitchell's been doing. Everyone who played on the Jazz bench had a positive with the highest being Jordan Clarkson at plus 20 for his plus minus. You look at the Suns, it's it's not quite as obvious, but everyone on the bench had a minus. Um, most of them minus double digits. Most of the starters had a pretty good plus for plus minus. Uh, they did have a um, Booker and Bridges were barely into the minus at minus six and minus two. So I think it was Jordan Clarkson scoring and the Utah Jazz bench defense able to shut down the 
um, Suns bench, which the Suns only had, uh, what is that, 11 points off the bench. Jordan Clarkson, by himself, doubled the production, uh, scoring-wise, doubled the scoring production of the Suns bench. So I think that was a huge factor in the Jazz winning this game, um, is getting that spark plug off the bench. And we had... Like we didn't have a lot of scoring besides Jordan Clarkson, but look at Whiteside, eight rebounds, a steal on a block house, uh, five rebounds, a block. Um, you got fours coming in there. He got four assists, two rebounds. Um, so you were getting production. Rudy Gay really had a quiet box score night and he, he's been having quiet box score nights for quite a while now. So, uh, but he hasn't been a negative. He hasn't been, hurting the jazz he just hasn't been helping as much as i was hoping him to hoping he would that would be the right way to say that um yeah so shout out to jordan clarkson for probably winning the jazz this game which is a huge win against the number one team in the league record wise um we stopped them from getting their 50th win so i'll take that um and the jazz are on a roll i'm excited to see what comes up next i'd I did want to hop into the team stats. And if you haven't noticed, if you watch these post games that I do, kind of my style is I go with the team stats and I kind of explain. I use those, that segment more to explain why I think the game went how it did. Uh, I think, and then the box score is more to shout out particular player performances. I think this, in this case, the box score kind of told us everything we needed to know, but if you come to the team stats, one thing that I thought was interesting is rebounds is always a big thing, big indicator of who's going to win. The Jazz won that by five rebounds. So that's normally a like, because sometimes in a close game, a team that wins shouldn't have won. And so there are a few, I don't know, like there are a few things that I look at to see if that team should have won. So I, it was a close game. The Suns are a great team. I want to make. I wanted to make sure this Jazz win wasn't a fluke. I'll I'll take it if it was a fluke, but I would prefer if it wasn't. So one thing that I look at is the rebounding battle. The Jazz won the rebounding battle. You know, I talk about turnovers a ton. If you watch my post games, another thing I look at is turnovers. If the difference is like four or more turnovers, that's kind of a sign that maybe the winning team, if they turn the ball over four plus four four times more than the opposing team or than the losing team, I should say, then maybe that's a sign. The Jazz only turned it over one extra time. Okay, so both of those check off. I a Largest lead is an interesting one to see. Both of them had a large lead that just kind of tells me it, it was a good game. I don't think that's that's a fun one to look at in close games, but I, I don't think that tells us much. So I look at rebounds, turnovers. Then I look at the shooting. I look at percentages. Number of shots taken, number of shots made in both field goals, three-pointers, and free throws. Um, And so the Jazz and the Suns made the same number of shots. If you make more shots, normally you're going to win the game. They made the same number, which tells me it was a close game, and it could have gone either way. The Jazz made more threes, but they also took... they, They made four more threes, they took 12 more. So what that's telling me is the Jazz, just because of their play style... Like, that's what won them the game was their three-point shooting. Uh, So at this point, it it looked like, just looking at those numbers, I would give the Jazz a slight edge because I I, I take three-pointers as more of a a luck thing, not not an earned thing, because maybe not a luck thing, more of a style thing. It's the Jazz took 43s, the Suns took 28. So that's just, you're going to make more. And it, it worked out for them tonight. So looking at rebounds and looking at the shooting stats, not looking at free throws, I'd say the Jazz had the slight edge. And the reason why I would say, and then looking at free throws, I'd say the Jazz earned this win is because free throws, if you miss them, I don't like you. I I don't know how to word this. It's, it's not so much that like it, let's say for example, the sun's, took a bunch more free throws than the Jazz, but they just weren't making them, that would be a sign to me that the Jazz kind of stole a win from the Suns. 
because uh, sometimes you just have bad free throw nights or or things like that happen. But it was the opposite way. The Jazz took four more free throws, made the same amount of free throws. So it would like, and I know some of the free throws that were missed were by good free throw shooters, and that just happens. So I think that's more of a statistic rather than that free throw shooter was off. So I think if it was any other night, the Jazz would have had two or three, four extra free throws made than the Suns. And it still would have been a close game. It would have been an eight-point game or less at that point. But that's kind of showing me that maybe that's a sign of optimism that the Jazz really did earn this win. Not that not that many people were questioning it. It was a great game. So I don't know if that last segment made, <laughs> made sense in anyone else's brain except for mine. But that is something I like to break down in close games like this. And if you just care about the conclusion, none of those numbers made sense because I didn't portray them very clearly. Just know... I think the Jazz earned this win, and the Jazz earned it in a way that it shouldn't have been this close. Uh, They just made a couple slip-ups that kept it to four, which is a really promising thing where you still pulled off the win, which is great. And I think they probably should have won by eight to ten points instead of just four. So, and this is the best team in the league. So, that I did mention the Jazz aren't in the real conversation for championship right now. If anything's a sign that they might earn their way back in, I think that's a great sign that that will happen. So I'll wrap up the episode here. Hopefully you like enjoyed that. If you did like the video, um, if you're a jazz fan, make sure to follow us on follow our channel, whatever you're listening to. We're, we're starting to get, get some giveaways going on. We just gave away a jazz hat. We have a few more that we're going, that are going to come up and, We're always looking for ways to hand that stuff out. So make sure you follow us. If you're a jazz fan and you want some jazz merchandise, like here's a great way to get a great chance at getting it. And just to let you know, like with the last giveaway, like most of these giveaways, it's like you have a one in like 10,000 chance that you'll actually get it right. This last hat that we gave away by the end of it, the people who qualified for it, there were 10 people. So they, each person who entered had a 10% chance of winning. So If you just throw your name in there, you have a really good chance of winning. So make sure to follow. We'll let you know the details on on how you can win your next Jazz Hat here in the next week or so. So, uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in, and I'm excited to see what the Jazz can do.